whatever you do, don't look at this lens. Don't touch it if you do look at it. And if you do touch it, please don't put it on the front of a camera. It might be the best thing you ever do. Roll titles. <laughs> Hi YouTube, Brian James at Micro Four Thirds Guy with you once again. And as I said in the intro, I've got this with me. This is the Olympus 12 to 100 f4 fixed aperture lens. Uh, it's mounted on my EM1 Mark II. And as I said in the intro, please don't look at it. For your own sake, don't look at it. But I'll tell you why you shouldn't look at it later on in the video. First of all, I'll tell you what I'm doing with it. I'm a talking tarn. Now, if you haven't come across talking tarn, I did do a, um, a little uh, video on this in my very early days. I'll, I'll try and find a link to it up there if I can. This is a, a wonderful uh, little um, tarn, a, a small lake, uh, just outside Brampton where I live. And basically this is uh, a lake which was formed by glaciers. It's a glacial lake and it's about 10,000 years old. And it's a lovely little nature reserve up here. But it's taken me three days to get this video done. I came up the other day, I got absolutely drenched with rain. I came up a couple of days later, you can ignore the ducks in the background. I came up a couple of days later and I got snowed on. So today is the first day I've been able to come out and actually do a little video on this. And one of the first days I've been able to use this, this lens. Now you see I've got this lens mounted to my AM1 Mark II and um, this lens has built-in image stabilization. Combined with the image stabilization, the IBIS and the camera, it gives you about six and a half stops of image stabilization. Now, you've got to remember this lens came out around about 2016, I think at the same time as the M1 Mark II, and that was a phenomenal amount of IS, really was. Now you see there's a switch on the side. I wish I had noticed there was a switch on the side. When I first got this lens from my friend Paul, thank you very much for the loan of this lens, Paul. I put it on the camera and I tried taking the shot and it was awful. I was having to go back to basic techniques just to get a still shot. And I thought, well, it's not that big and heavy a lens, surely that I can't balance this. Then I realized that the switch was off. And of course, if you switch the switch off on this, it doesn't just switch the IS off in the lens, it switches the whole IS system off because this works as a dual IS system. It uses the in-body stabilization as well as the, cam as well as the lens stabilization to get your shot. And if you switch one off, you switch both off. So switch it back on again and it became rock solid, it really was. It shows how good IS has come over the years. Yes, there are cameras now, the OM1 Mark II has given you eight and a half stops of image stabilization, but at the same time, this is 2024. This is eight years ago. So big, big changes since then. The other thing it's got on the side is a function button, which a few of the Olympus lenses have, which is assignable inside the camera. And this will work on both Olympus and Panasonic cameras. So if you um, want to assign that button on there, then you can. The lens itself is all metal construction. It really is a little bit of plastic, but it's a very, very good quality plastic on there. But basically it's all metal construction for the body. It is big, it is heavy for a Micro Four Thirds lens, but this is part of the Pro series. And you're getting effectively a very wide angle lens all the way up to a medium to long telephoto lens. So between that 12 to 100 millimeters, you've really got some range on that. Lens feels fabulous in hand. And one of the things that I really like about it is the feel of the zoom ring. Yes, it does trumpet out a little bit, but not too much. Very, very smooth, very, very even, and very well damped. And also the focus ring on the front is nice and free. But the best part of the focus ring is the clutch. It's got that Olympus pullback clutch. And this is a beautiful thing, which allows you to get a focal length, a fixed focal length, uh, as manual. Slide it forward, you go straight to autofocus. The autofocus will do whatever it wants, but normally on a camera, when you go back to manual, you have to try and get that focus back again. On this, wherever you left it, straight back to that focus point. So if you're doing something where you want to have a fixed focus on somewhere, these are fantastic, they really are. And of course, it's graduated for the distance if you want to do uh, things like hyperfocal focusing and things. The lens, as I say, is quite big and heavy for a Micro Four Thirds lens, but it's not silly. I mean, this is my left hand that I've got it in, which isn't my good hand. Quite can't really lift it. In fact, I've actually been taking it around today with the, um, the battery grip on, with a spare battery and on my AM1 Mark II, and it hasn't, been, it hasn't been particularly bad at all to use. There'll be some photos, by the way, if you're interested in seeing some of the photos I've done today. Uh, they're not terrific things. I've literally just been going and getting some sample photos, but they'll be at the end. I haven't looked at the specs on this. I deliberately haven't. I 
picked this lens up from Paul and I, I thought, you know what, I just want to see what it's like. I don't go around quoting specifications when I'm taking photographs of birds. I don't go around quoting specifications when I'm taking photographs of landscapes or churches or people. The specifications are there to help me buy it. So I can tell you though, it has quite a number of lenses, quite a number of elements in a few groups and some are certain types of glass and certain types of shape and other ones are different types of glass and shape. There we are, that's all we need to know about the, uh, the lens arrangement. What I can tell you is it's got a 72mm uh, filter ring on the front which, although big for micro four thirds, is quite a common size on uh, other formats of cameras so filters are readily available for this. Um, it has a fixed aperture of f4 now, before I go on about this, I've been pulled up. It has a fixed aperture of f4. What do I mean by that? Because people have said, it's got f4, but I know for a fact you can get 5.6 in 6.3. And what I mean by a fixed aperture of f4 is when you are fully zoomed out or fully zoomed in, the most open your garden get is f4 on this. In other words, as you zoom, your aperture doesn't change. The little 12 to 32, f3.5 to 5.6, I'm filming this on. As I zoom in from 12 millimeter, which is maximum aperture 3.5, the maximum aperture reduces to 5.6. It doesn't on this, which makes it ideal if you're a video photographer. What also makes it ideal, of course, for a video photographer is a manual clutch. And also, this is, part, got, this is marked up for MSC, so it's obviously one that Olympus consider be, to be ideal for. For the, for the video work because uh, that's a little mark to say that it's uh, video compliant. On the AM Martin Mark II I found it is absolute joy to, to use. It's uh, I've been out taking some photographs of ducks today handheld. Yes it is on a, say, on a bigger side but it's not silly compared to um, what do they call them? Um, lenses of the... <sighs> it'll come to me in a second. Um, Full frame, that's the one, the full frame variety. It's small! This is, I mean, that lens is equivalent in sort of size to the, um, the, the what was it, it was a 24 to, um, 24 to 70, I think it was, uh, zoom that I had, the L series zoom on my old Canon, and this is a huge amount more competent lens than that one was. So, yes, for a micro four thirds, it's big, for other formats, it's actually really nice and nimble. It's also fully weather sealed. And going on to the AM1 Mark II, which is also fully weather sealed, if you've got those two together, you've got a fantastic combination for going out in all sorts of weathers. I have been out, as I say, a couple of days. I still try and shield cameras. I never like taking cameras in really wet conditions, but if you have to, fully weather sealed for both the camera and the lens and that gives you an advantage when you're out shooting especially if you're doing nature work whether it's landscapes or or animals or whatever it is or even sports photography anything you're outside for now the thing i'm really interested in this is the optical quality and i've done a few test shots previous to this at home where i was really wanting to see what was going on they're not great shots or boring shots so they're not in the end shots but what i did find is that this I think this is probably working at its best fully open in f4. It is sharp all the way to the corners from the center. There doesn't seem to be any vignetting, there doesn't seem to be any color cast or collaboration. I did manage to get, in the small bit of sunshine the other day, a very, very slight amount of, um, uh, uh, of, of light coming through, a little bit of stream of light coming through. But it was so controlled, it was untrue. As soon as I put the lens hood on, which is included on this, a really nice lens hood, which has a, a little button to press to take it off, which is quite difficult to take off, which I'm going to leave on at the moment since it's not my lens, so I'm not going to force it. But it's got a button on the side you can take the lens hood off. That's part of the deal. If you put that on, I was finding that you weren't getting any, any real sort of problems whatsoever. So what's the lens excel at? What is it excel at? What is it excel at? Nothing. Oh, that sounds a bit negative really, doesn't it? Well, you get lenses which really do excel at certain things, but they're very poor in other regions. This isn't. It really is a bit of a jack of all trades and master, almost master, of all of them. It's not a master of any though. It doesn't really excel at any one particular thing except being a really good lens. But what it does do, every one of those things that it tries to do, it does extremely well. So the focus, extremely fast, extremely good. The image quality, extremely good. The contrast that, it, that you get off it, extremely good. The build quality, extremely good. 
image stabilization extremely good and this is why I said please please don't look at it do not look at this lens if you look at it you'll be drawn in by it it has a power it has a magnetic charm you look at this lens it's going to draw you into wanting to touch it and it does feel so nice in the hand it really does as you're zooming in and out it just feels lovely when you're doing your focus it feels lovely so don't touch it and if you do touch it please don't put it onto a camera that's really dangerous really really dangerous so if you put it on the camera the next step before you know it it's like an addiction you'll press the shutter release and you'll take some photographs and as soon as you do that you're lost you're going to be lost because what's going to happen is you're going to be checking your bank balance you're going to be wanting to see if you can afford the what is it about 1300 pounds 1200 1300 pounds uk to buy this lens it's that dangerous and before you've actually had any conscious feeling you'll find you've put an order in either a local camera dealer or your mail order dealer for one of these and if you can't afford that if you really can't afford it you'll find yourself looking on one of the second hand sites to buy one they are that bad it really is that dangerous to get hold of this lens <laughs> and do I want one yes I want one uh, and that is why I say it's dangerous because I've ordered one I've ordered one and why have I ordered one? Well, I think it's perfect use is as a tourist lens. Because as a tourist lens, you've got all that weather protection. Most of the time, you don't need anything faster than F4, but that F4 is fast enough to get almost everything you want. The days where I've been going off abroad on holiday and I'll have a backpack and I've got five, six, seven, eight kilos of camera gear with me to try and make sure I've got the perfect camera and lens for that shot. To go over there to get all these shots and then bring it all back again and half the stuff hasn't been used and you never got the opportunity for this that, and the other with this with the focal range on this the 12 to 100 which as i say is a, a wide telephone uh, a wide angle lens a very wide angle lens to a uh, medium to long telephoto zoom it just makes things a perfect lens to have on you the weather ceiling means that if you're caught out when you're on a visit somewhere then you're not going to be worried about the camera gear being damaged by the rain and scuffling away for that. You can put it away in an easy time. Yes, you might find that you do want to take something like um, a standard zoom along with a standard prime along with you, which is small enough to fit in the pocket, just when you do need that super open aperture, when you do need that super fastness if you're inside a building. But that's what 100, 150, 200 grams, so that's not a big problem. And so I would say something like the. AM1 Mark II, the 12 to 100, and maybe one prime would be everything I would need to go on almost any tourist trip. <coughs> I've taken 100 to 300 lenses on holiday. I took it way to Cyprus just before Christmas. Can't remember using it. So this, to me, ideal for me as a tourist lens, and ideal for me as a professional lens, because sometimes when we're tourists we don't necessarily need super quality sometimes we do but with this we've always got that super quality and it's carryable it's not silly and it's not horrendously priced either so as i say don't look at it don't touch it don't put it in your camera don't try it because you'll buy it now i'd like to give a big thanks to all these people here who are my patreon um patrons who keep this channel going really really helpful thanks guys and also if you do want to give a bit of one-off support there is a paypal link below if you want to buy me a coffee or if you want to hit super thanks below then that was really appreciated too now i'm going to show you some photographs at the end just when i finish talking or waffling as some people call it why do you have to waffle on because i like waffling on when I've got nice gear to play with, I like waffling on. But there's some photographs at the end if you want to see them. Um, they've just been taken in the last couple of days. They're not terrific shots, but hopefully give you an idea what the, what the lens is capable of. Until the next time, though, keep on taking your camera out. Keep on having fun with your photography. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.